to the next level because of this small check which they were looking for let us say maybe uh, 1 lakh rupees or maybe 5 lakh rupees and on the other end uh, you know head start uh, can see a lot of potential hnis uh, a lot of uh, potential people who are having some wealth and who may want to you know start investing in this space and reach out to potential startups and engage with them and see how they can take it to the next level and give them their first check so that they can you know move to the next level so uh, hence head start has launched this initiative called head start investor circle it is going to be a uh, a uh, uh, community of the next generation of investors uh, people who are new to the space and who are new to investing in startups they they want to but they may uh, not have the desired knowledge or may not have the desired uh, uh, reach to uh, these startups and uh, hence we thought why not uh, you know launch this initiative and why not uh, have you know people and experts like prajakt and paresh and many others who can help us all uh, you know and who can help us all with their knowledge with their uh, you know learnings and deep expertise in this space and uh, and from there we start the thread and uh, we help you get access to good startups because we have been closely working with so many incubators we have been uh, working directly with almost 4000 plus startups across the country so uh, you know this is this is the initiative where when you are trying to bridge both the sides uh, from people who are new investors or maybe who want to start exploring the space and at the same time some very early stage startups who are looking for their first check to be raised from you people so once again i welcome you all and uh, we'll talk more about head start investor circle uh, towards the end and uh, you know i won't uh, uh, you know uh, take much of your time in the introduction part uh, feel free to ask your questions related to uh, anything and everything towards the end of the session and uh, now take uh, you know um, i would like to introduce uh, prajakt raut uh, over here who is already with us and uh, thank you so much prajakt in taking out your uh, time for this uh, particular uh, absolutely my pleasure to share so let absolutely me absolutely my pleasure uh, uh, let me give a, a very quick uh, introduction so uh, Uh, you you have over thirty uh, plus years of experience, and it is very uh, short time to introduce all about it. But you know uh, what what uh, I would like to say that uh, Project is uh, the founder of uh, Applify, and he has been uh, on a mission to impact one lakh plus uh, early stage entrepreneurs. And this is a very very uh, wonderful thing, uh, you know, which uh, which we have been looking for. He has uh, earlier worked uh, as head of operations with uh, one of India's largest uh, investment uh, circle, India Angel Network. Uh, he has also been the Asia director of Thai, the Indus Entrepreneurs. Uh, he is also author of a wonderful book on startup funding and uh, you know how to how to grow your startup. I have been uh, I've I've recently started reading that book and I'm I'm really impressed with uh, the kind of uh, writing he has. and without taking much time project i would want you to you know please enlighten us with uh, your thoughts and uh, uh, help us understand the space better thank you very much tushar and you know i would also like to be introduced as one of the very passionate and and proud volunteers of head start actually i've been involved with uh, head start even before the name head start got done with this when aditya and all that were thinking about the creating a community this was i think way back in 2006 if i'm not mistaken when uh, it started a startup saturday and i think you know the uh, ladies and gentlemen my interest in promoting entrepreneurship comes from a conviction that promoting entrepreneurs or job creators is very very important in a country like ours if we don't create job creators we are doomed we will be you know it will be a huge problem as far as the country is concerned and if you think now in the context of what is happening with robotics and ai and automation and other things kind of which are taking away large chunks of jobs that were earlier getting absorbed in bpos and manufacturing and stuff job creation and job creators is something that the country needs to be really really focused on and that's my mission in life and therefore i have embarked on a on a on a journey to say that i help uh, or at least instigate and assist 100000 people to become entrepreneurs in my uh, lifetime and my talk today is going to be about uh, what it what it means to be an angel investor and why that is an interesting investment opportunity angel investing is is not just about saying that i want to support entrepreneurs and let me put some money into it of course there is that component as well but 
angel investing is a very very interesting asset class in itself much like you would put in fixed deposit mutual funds real estate commodities or other forms that you will invest in investing in startups can be a very very uh, uh, interesting class i'm going to just put together you know open up my slide deck uh, and i'm going to run through some of these slides around around here this one Uh, Tushar, are you able to see my slide? Yeah, we can see that. It says startups a new asset class for HNS. That's the one that you see. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> okay, my introduction has already been given, but my company Applyify works with large corporates and funds in helping them manage their startup and innovation programs. And I've been in the startup ecosystem now for about fifteen, sixteen years. Uh, in various capacities, and primarily, you know, the kind of enthusiasm that I see in the in the startup world these days is completely, un, you know, unheard of in in the last six or you know, the 16, 17 years that I've been there. A couple of reasons. One is because there are lots of very interesting newer innovations that are coming in from different parts of the country. Earlier, it was focused on maybe two or three markets, but now. A lot of these smaller places and the tier two, tier three cities are also throwing up very, very interesting ideas. And especially as I understand, many of you may not be from the uh, top, you know, the, the three, four cities, which is actually good because that's where we require a lot more entrepreneurial activity to be supported by individuals like you. And in the uh, in my next 30, 35 minutes, what I'm going to cover is why investing in startups can provide superior risk adjusted returns as far as investors are concerned. And this is a proven fact, and this is on the basis of data. I'm not saying any of these things on the basis of pure speculation. Um, but investing in startups is not about putting money in one or two exciting ideas that you think might be able to uh, ma make money. It has to be a portfolio in the sense you have to invest in a range of companies because no matter how exciting they look, there is no predictability in terms of what will succeed and what will not succeed. And not just because the product was good or the business was good or the founder was good or not good and stuff like that. There are a variety of reasons that are speculative or unproven at this point of time or the early stage investing point of time because of which this asset class is called risk capital. And yet, despite all the stories that you hear of this company folded, that company did losses, this and that and stuff, I'll explain to you why this is still a very uh, important asset class. By the way, one of the things that I would urge any new, in, in, new uh, individual or any individual who's coming new into investing is to not go by the views given by you know the the the, the likes of the Eco Times and stuff, and doesn't mean that they are doing anything wrong. But newspapers and media, by and large, tends to in, to report onto the extreme. Somebody made a billion dollar valuation, or somebody raised a few million and 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 crashed out. But there's a lot of activity that happens in between that does not get reported because that is normal, boring, that that standard stuff that really does not have the uh, they have capacity to attract eyeballs. So yes, what you hear in media is one aspect about the business, but that's not the uh, that the and not the entire story. And there will be enough uh, different versions that you will need to familiarize yourself with. Now uh, it can become a very profitable investment, but you have to pick them early. As in individual investors, you have to pick those bets early, which means you have to be able to sniff what is potentially going to be a large business opportunity and why. Now, a lot of times individuals may or may not have the ability to do that. You don't have that either the time or you don't have the expertise or doing it. And that's why when you're investing in for the first time, working through networks like the one that Head Start is putting together is a good stepping stone into getting into investing. Much like, you know, uh, you if you have the bandwidth and the expertise to do equity investing, then doing it on your own could be useful. But if you don't have the bandwidth, going through a mutual fund is a usual, usually a, a better first step to get into equity investing. Similarly, when you're getting into startup investing, because you have to be able to, from thousands of applications, you have to get down to one or two or three companies that you would every quarter, every six months invest in. You have to uh, have the ability to meet hundreds of companies 
and 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 then to be able to pick winners earlier and that's why going through some of these networks is, is an usually a good one the reason is when you get in early you are able to get exceptionally you know large outcomes and the way startup investing works and the reason why it's a portfolio approach is exactly is this which is saying that if you invest in 20 companies maybe 5 or 10 companies of those will completely die out in the sense in the next two years they will they will cease to exist itself because something went wrong either the product did not work or competition came or execution failed something or the other would would kill the company maybe two or three or four of those companies will continue to exist but you will not get any returns from your for your capital in the sense the money that you've invested and the shares that you've taken will not be able to be sold to somebody else at a significantly higher price and therefore this is a portfolio game one or two of the companies in the portfolio that do really well literally cover up for the losses that you have made in the other companies that do, did not do so well but because you do not know which companies will become successful in which companies will will be laggard you have to really have a sort of a portfolio approach now by portfolio approach it does not mean that invest in any 10 20 companies that come your way even if they look exciting there is a bit of an art and a bit of a science to assessing what would be relevant as far as investing is concerned and primarily you have to understand one thing that nobody makes money by investing in a company by investing in a company you get shares in that company but you don't make money by holding shares you make money only when you are able to sell those shares to somebody else at a significantly higher price than what you had got at that means when you are making an investment you have to have an understanding of what kind of companies are likely to be to be relevant to the next round of investors who are likely to buy your shares and make further investments into that company and that again is the reason why formats and forums like head start angel investor networks and stuff will be interesting stepping stones for people to get first view of uh, into the world of investing you have to think long term unlike say for example mutual funds equities and other forms that you might be currently aware of or even say for example real estate where there is a lot more liquidity available investing in startups is a long term game typically it would be anywhere between say for years to 7 years before you are able to see an exit in the company exit meaning somebody else buying the shares that you hold in the company for a significantly higher price and therefore you get into a, a startup investing only when you know that you will be able to look at this from a 5 6 year horizon of course there are odd cases when even in 6 months 8 months 12 months people have been able to get significant returns i mean a recent example was a men's grooming company that got acquired by one of the large majors and i think about 8 or 10 months time the investors had got 5 or 6 times their their uh, uh, invested money but those are exceptions when you never play for the exceptions you you, you typically play for <coughs> excuse me for a normal uh, uh, way the business would or typical things would work out and therefore it's it's usually good to plan for the uh, longer term and again when you start getting in early you are able to see how these companies will grow over a period of time and no matter how you what you read in the media it usually takes a decade for a company to become a really successful one of course you can exit in between when when it is already on the path of 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 greatness because that's when other investors etc are coming in with much larger checks to to participate in the longer journey and that's where angel investors are able to get their to get their exit but getting in very very early is very important because that's when the valuations are the lowest and you are able to get a significantly high, higher outcome when you are uh, uh, when you exit from that from that company okay uh, so Oh, while there will be i mean if you change your profile on linkedin today saying angel investor by tomorrow you will have 20 applications coming in sir i want to or ma'am i want to uh, get funding please invest and there will be a lot of hype around a certain sectors ai ml health tech and now these days it is about uh, vaccine logistics and vac- vaccine transportation and this and that don't go by hype because while those would be indicative areas those are also areas that are hyper competitive in more often than not don't invest in things that look like a great product or even a great business and what i mean by that is a good investment and a good business are two very different things yes they are linked 
but just because the business becomes good does not mean that you will it will be a great outcome as a business is concerned you should only invest in businesses where you know that there is a potential for you to sell that equity to somebody else who could be that somebody else it could be that next round of investors it could be a strategic exit or a strategic investor who buys your your um, your equity and makes further investments into the startup that you have invested in um, Tushar, just let me know if I am going too fast. If if so, then I will I will pace my talk accordingly. But if not, I am continuing. Um, invest only in companies where you believe that there is a potential to get ten to fifteen times the return on the capital that you that you deploy. Now these are not decisions that or these are not assumptions that you can make, and that's where going through a formal forum that helps you understand why this could be a big investment. opportunity is very important it doesn't mean that all the companies that you invest in will give you 10 to 15 times the return as i said out of maybe 20 companies that you invest over a 2 3 year period maybe 8 or 10 of those companies completely die and there is nothing in the sense you invested some amount of money but nothing happens the company is dead you you have to write that off maybe two or three or four companies just continue to languish but you don't get any or they even prosper but you don't get any exit because nobody else has made further investments into that company so it is about one or two companies that give you 10 15 20 30 times the return that really makes up for a good investment case as a portfolio is concerned i have mentioned this uh, you have to it usually rather than being a lone soldier it is important to go through a angel investor network but i would urge you that when you are looking at investing into startups don't say okay let me invest in two companies and see what happens more often than not that outcome is likely to be uh, not so positive if you decide to make an invest uh, to become an angel investor uh, and there is every merit to consider doing becoming an angel investor keep aside a certain set of pool of money i am assume that pool of money saying okay i'm going to over the next two years going to keep say say 20 lakhs aside for angel investor i'm just taking a hypothetical number then work with angel investor groups that will allow you to deploy that money in about 10 15 startups uh, even if you have say 50 lakhs then figure out what are the angel groups that will allow you to deploy that kind of money in 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 15 20 startups but don't say that look i can invest 50 lakhs but let me try for the next one year with just two investments in two companies and see where it goes it won't it most likely may not work out it could and it could give blowout returns as well but more often than it won't because of this whole portfolio approach nature that i uh, uh, spoke to you about okay one i mean the the overall criteria that you should look at is the market large enough and there is there enough room for for the company to grow for newer and newer investors to come in and let me explain this mathematically what that what that means if an angel network say for example 20 of you are coming together or 50 of you are coming together and putting uh, say 1 crore rupees in a in a in a company and you want 10 15 x return onto that suppose that you want that 1 crore to to net you 10 crores in the next 3 or 4 or 5 years which means that the next round of investors who come in should have the capacity to put in at least 50 60 crores so that you are able to get 10 crores out and there is enough money left to invest into the company because nobody like no next round of investor is going to come into the company to just make you money they will put money into the company part of which will will get you an exit which means that after putting in 40 50 crores into that company in the next two or three years there has to be enough headroom for that company to grow for the next round of investors to feel confident of of making more money from from there so smaller market no matter how interesting and profitable profitable they are are not appropriate for venture capital type of investing and therefore by design and definition venture capital investing is only for businesses that will have a very very large uh, uh, market opportunity now the second point is very important in a large market you have to bet on companies that will have a dominant position in that market and the reason is simple because you make money not because the business makes money you make money when you sell your equity to somebody else at a significantly higher price and the reason why somebody will give you a significantly higher price on that equity than what you had bought it at is because the company is a dominant player 
if uh, imagine if there's a you know 10000 crore market but your company is languishing at 2 3 crore it may be making profit but it's languishing at 2 3 crores when the leaders in that market are about 50 60 100 crores 200 crores uh, uh, nobody is going to give you a premium for the equity in that you have and most likelihood it's going to be a distress sale or just barely about maybe even a haircut in that in that case if you, if if at all whether the company becomes a dominant player or no, you don't know. That's a risk that you are taking. That's a risk that you are, you know, that's a chance that you are taking. And that's the reason why we talked about the portfolio approach. But you have to look at whether the founders have an aspiration to become dominant, whether they have a deep understanding of business, whether they have the conviction and the commitment to be, uh, 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 to really pursue this business in a, in a long-term basis. And of course, the business has to have a strong business case because eventually every business needs to make money. Without that, it is not going to be a, a, a profitable investment for anyone to be a part of. Okay. Uh, and I keep on saying this, so don't go on the business plan because a business plan is a useless product. If somebody is presenting a bound business plan saying, this is my business plan, this is what I want you to buy into, it can't work. No business plan ever works in the manner it does. And even if, say, for example, Mukesh Ambani or Sunil Mittar or, or Narayan Murthy could write a business plan that works very well, we wouldn't have a stock market. The stock market is there because everybody's business plan, including Mukesh Ambani, is a, is a speculative business plan. Sometimes it works the way it does. Sometimes it underperforms. Sometimes the company will overperform. And likewise, but you still have to look at the business plan, not because of the specifics of what it says, but to understand whether the entrepreneur has thought through every aspect and every complexity that they will under, they will they will face when uh, uh, when when handling the business. And this is where the role of angel investors come in, because angel investors, by definition, are more experienced individuals. People who have seen the ups and downs of businesses have got a lot more experience than maybe the founders. And therefore, you will be able to pinpoint and say that, look, this assumption is very simplistic. It is not practical. I would think that you should consider a higher cost for this than what you currently have. Also, you need to understand a VC and an angel investor, while both do the same thing, put money in the company and take equity, are not the same thing. Angel investors are people who will work on assumptions in a manner that, and for, and you will make, you will put money at a time when the company is trying to validate the business model in the market. A VC is somebody who will come in after you and say, okay, that my business model has been validated. I'm now willing to put in more money to expand this business significantly. Therefore, the valuation that you get is significantly lower and you therefore get more equity for the investments that you make at early stage because you are taking a higher, you are entering the company at a much higher risk stage. Of course, you have to take all reasonable uh, considerations to see that your risk is well assessed and you have priced the risk accordingly. And that's again where angel network forums and all that come in because there will be experienced people like Tushar and others who help curate teams and are able to bring a more experienced perspective to investors on this. Uh, I, just want, I just want to be conscious of time so that I, may, I have another five, seven minutes before I can complete this. Uh, so different stages of ventures carry different kinds of risks. And I'm saying this because you have to assess what stage of the ventures that you can come in because individually, more and more companies will come to you and no matter how tempting it becomes, you have to assess where you should come in. And assuming that a successful venture is going through this kind of a journey in terms of uh, or maybe two, three, four, five years, six, seven years, this is going on a trajectory, whatever those numbers are. Now, each stage of the business carries a very different risk. So if you think about the early stages, it is a concept risk, idea chalega, nahi chalega, execution risk, whether this team will be able to do it, not do it. And then if they are able to even do a pilot stage and small stage, whether they will be able to make a big company out of it. At the next stage of the business, which is when the concept, et cetera, has been tested and tried in the market, concept risk is out, execution risk and scale risk still stays. And at the third stage, which is where, where a lot more investment goes into the company, there is still a scale-up risk. 
the point that i have to make here is that you have to get as angel investors you cannot get in at the second or the third stage because that is the stage where the capital is required is typically a lot more than individuals can fulfill by and large i mean i'm generalizing but that's the that's going to be the uh, and the first phase is when you are really getting in and as an angel investor the bigger difference between an angel investor and a vc is you are working with the founder in helping them fine tune the concept in moving from what they are getting done in some way or the other to prove the concept in in uh, helping them validate the assumptions hel- helping them think through various aspects of the business and that is one expectation out of an angel investor that in addition to money you might be able to provide some perspectives and help if you can that's great if you don't that's okay as well but collectively as a group of 10 15 people co investing into a startup as angel investors it is usually better for for you to uh, to see if you can add value to the company that you are investing in by and large angel investing is not a solo game it is a group game in the sense if a company requires 20 lakhs maybe 10 people will come in together somebody will put in 1 lakh 2 lakh somebody might say okay i want to put in 5 lakhs and stuff so collectively this group of maybe 10 15 20 people might put in this 20 lakh that uh, the startup needs <clears throat> okay uh, so this is where angel investors etc should should uh, come in and i'm i'm not going to cover this because this is so what we should be looking for are competent and committed teams and why i mean competence obviously because they need to have the ability to execute and stuff even they may not have the experience of doing that and that's different the competence is different from experience competence is about saying that do these people understand what it takes to run a business even if they don't have the experience do they seem operationally sorted in the sense or are they periphery and just have no street smartness street smartness is at this point of time very very important now the reason the second is very important that the founders need to have conviction in what they do and they need to be committed to the cause and the reason is this because no no startup journey is going to go you know straight like this every startup journey is going to be ups and downs and if the convic- if the founders do not have the conviction and the passion and the commitment to follow this through at the first hurdle and the dip and the challenges it will be easy for them to give up and say nahi yaar i thought this was going to be easy it's not that going to be that easy let me give up but somebody who comes with a tremendous amount of conviction for a particular kind of a business is likely to ride through the rough rough times and make that business work it takes more time but uh that's the that's one of the key criteria that you have to assess when you are making an investment into a startup <clears throat> okay uh, investors should should look for plans with practical milestones but with large aspirations sometimes startups will come with very large aspirations and very large practical uh, or very large milestones for the next you know one quarter two quarter one year and stuff you have to be able to bring that balance of practicality into the plans that they have entrepreneurs by design will be very optimistic you have to be the adult supervisor so to say in that relationship we should look for teams with focus in the initial phases even when you know businesses can do saying that i can go after smes and to large customers i can sell to small as well as large businesses i can do this and as can well do that and maybe they can the product is relevant for all those markets but in the initial phases you have to be uh, focused very very focused because we have seen that companies that focus on doing something well and in a target a narrow bracket in the initial basis are able to build a much stronger foundation and they can expand us on the side as we go along you need a strong implementation plan uh, clearly defined milestones and goals and tasks and then obviously the plan needs to have a very good clarity in terms of what they are going to do with the money how are they going to spend it what is going to be achieved and stuff like that most people will have a very uh, rough kind of a plan that is very optimistic and again angel networks like head start etc will work before they get startups across to you would have worked with the founders in making these plans practical but if some founder comes to you directly i think it's important to understand all of these aspects as we uh, go along and at the end of the day angel investing is also about 
trust and the chemistry that you have between the founders and stuff like that. Typically, you should get involved with companies where there is a chemistry match and where there is a match of personalities. If you are a very aggressive kind of a you know sales kind of a person or uh, and the founder is very timid, that relationship may not be as 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 you know positive as as otherwise or the other way around uh, uh, as well. So I think angel investing is a lot more about science as well as art and chemistry uh, rather than than just a pure you know data and and stuff like that. But it's an you know, it's an it's an interesting uh, opportunity. I think it was uh, given the fact that you guys have all come on to on a Saturday afternoon to to hear this conversation indicates your interest in getting into an angel investing. And I would uh, strongly strongly urge you to consider being angel investors. There are lots of good opportunities available, and there are lots of good people uh, and forums like Head Start that will help you make the right decisions and guide you through the entire aspect. So in short, I'll end by saying that, you know, don't invest till you go back feeling, wow, I really like, I mean, the gut feel has to be there saying that, wow, I think this is going to be really a big one. Uh, and I think this company can really do it. The chemistry as well as that gut feel is the first criteria on the basis with on which you should say, yes, I'm interested or no. And of course, beyond that, writing the check is about all the checklist and the detailing that I have spoken to you about. Uh, I'll end my monologue here, but uh, uh, happy to, I don't know, Tishar, whether you want me to un answer questions now or would you like to get get those at the end? And uh, happy to you know stay connected. And if there's anybody that wants more deeper understanding, happy to do that one-on-one -on -one as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Project. So we can have the next uh, five minutes, we can have a couple of questions, definitely, because uh, I mean, uh, you would be the best one to uh, answer them. Uh, maybe a question specific to Head Start or maybe Investor Circle can be taken up towards the end. Uh, but you know, any anything related to the deck or related to the talks which we had, uh, feel free to uh, put up your questions in the chat box and we can uh, pick a couple of them and uh, discuss. So Mansi is asking for uh, you know a couple of forums where uh, people can go in and uh, you know explore opportunities of investment. There's one question that uh, Arvind has asked, how to do the first investment? I think, you know, every investment has to have the same level of diligence that you, you need to put in, whether it's the first or the hundredth investment that you will do in your life. I think the diligence has to be uh, there. And much like I gave you the example of being, you know, within equity and a mutual fund. Earlier, you will go with a mutual fund to understand what this works. At the same time, you will, when, a, somebody comes to you with, with, you know, with a with a recommendation saying, "Oh, why don't you invest in this company?" Make your own judgment call in terms of what would I do? Would I write a check or would I not write? And track the company over time in terms of saying that did it work out the way I thought? Did it not work out? Do a lot more, you know, start reading about uh, on on forums like Inc. Forty Two, Your Story. These are platforms where there's a lot of information on on startups, etc. is available, and when you are making the, the, the first check, uh, be a passive investor in the sense, be a participant with others who have got more experience in doing the deal. I mean, if 20 of you are investing in a company or 20 of you are first time investors, I would recommend that's not the right place to begin. In, if 20 of you are, are making investments into a company, at least have two or three more experienced investors with about 10, 15, 20 startups investments into the portfolio who are participating in that deal. As a result of which you will understand from the interactions and the questions that they ask and, and how that entire you know, process is done. And over a period of time, you will get uh, familiar with it. But start small. Don't start, no matter how excited you feel with the first deal that you see on the table, don't put a larger amount. Start small. Start with maybe a, a lakh or two lakhs, a couple of lakhs in, in, in doing so. Uh, and be comfortable with losing your money in in a few deals. And the reason I'm saying this is because it's again a portfolio approach. Maybe your first company makes one lakh becomes one crore, but it's it's quite possible for the next five six companies that you do they will die out in the next you know few months few few years and stuff and maybe your 11th company makes you a couple of crores that covers up for everything that you've done so far so when you make investment in your mind write that amount off 
think I have put two blacks into that company. Kuch hua to theek hai. Otherwise, I'm willing to lose that. Out. Of course, I mean that's a that's a mind trick. But otherwise, be be very you know diligent with with that. Uh, so the next question is. Uh, uh, I think there is one uh, question on uh, you know how are the startups valued, like early stage startup. Yeah, so there is no basis for valuation of any startup. So you know there is no valuation as such, and therefore the what you hear in media is actually a misnomer. Valuation is not about the you know the value at which the deal gets done. So if somebody is putting in you know if a group is putting in fifty lakh rupees uh, and taking twenty percent equity in the company, by definition the valuation of the company is two and a half crores. But if it is just an idea, there is no basis for that valuation. It just means that you've been able to strike a, a transaction at X amount of price per share. Uh, but on the other hand, if somebody comes and says, "No, no, I think I like that idea. I'm not going to put uh, 50 lakhs. I'm going to put two and a half crores into that," doesn't mean you'll take 100% of the company. You'll still take 25, 30% of the company, because what you do as an angel investor is take what is called a, sig a significant minority. Which means anywhere between 15, 20, 25, 30, 35%. I mean, 15 to 20 would be the the kind of typical range. 10 would be much lower. 30, 35 would be on the higher side. But that's the thing. There is no basis for it. It's just a basis in terms of saying we want to have the founders have enough equity so that they are incentivized to stay connected into that business. And yet, you need to have enough to be able to make significant uh, value out of it. But these are conversations that need to be done on a deal by deal basis rather than on the, at a broad, you know, sort of level. So there is a question from Pradeep. Uh, so, is there any uh, any rule or any criteria on which we can evaluate uh, the capability of the tech team, whether they are able to deliver, or the sales team, whether they are capable of growth? So, is any thumb rule or any guidance around that? well i mean you know so typically you would you uh, you would do the same diligence as you would say for example if you were hiring a, hiring a tech person for your company you would assess, you would assess that you may or may not be the best person to assess the tech capabilities in which case you bring in somebody who is more of an expert to understand understand the tech capabilities but you know what i tell uh, most investors and that is what i follow as well that what the person can do is not as important is how passionate are they about doing what they do i mean say for example if i'm not a doctor and i'm trying to create say for example a chain of low uh, low cost hospitals in tier 3 cities uh, doesn't mean that i have i'm you know i'm not qualified to do it just because i can't operate or i can't you know take that i have to understand <clears throat> what the potential is i have to to have the passion for that there has to be something driving me saying that i want to create small clinics in tier 2 cities which are connected by technology to the to to uh, uh, the big ones of course if somebody is going to be driving technology or sales and stuff you have to assess them much like you would assess any any anyone else but in addition to just the competence you have to assess them on the conviction for that business in terms of you, you know or then so so there are ways in which you will be able to uh, uh, understand how passion and therefore investing is never about investing in a business plan or a pitch deck or a pitch session it is always about interactions with the people to understand them as person right so uh, uh, pradeep two things uh, one is uh, is is there any ratio available of successful versus failed startup so santosh is keen on knowing some some insights around that uh are we well, want not a, it's not a you know it's not a science at all and i mean for example i gave the case of of oyo now that was venture nursery is one of the early investments and it's it's given them blow out returns on on to that uh and much like several other funds i mean you would have you could have 10 15 20 companies that you invested in that did okay okay and then maybe one company really did a blow out return or in some so there is i mean there is really no way to predict what will win and what will not win and not just because of i mean let's take the case of ola at that point of time there was taxi for sure and there was ola maybe softbank instead of investing ola could have invested in taxi for sure for whatever reason uh, maybe the founder may have found them first or whatever and taxi for sure may have been what today is ola and ola may have been what what taxi for sure is today and stuff like that so you know the good part about i mean 
not the good part. The interesting part about startup investing is that this is speculative risks that you are taking on the basis of gut feel. But because the outcomes are so significantly higher, if you invest in a startup consistently, it is a proven fact in every ecosystem of the world and data proven, not in terms of one or two people proven, across the world proven. Investing in startups gives you superior risk adjusted returns than even stock investing or investing in stock markets in, in, in the market. But you have to have a portfolio. You can't invest in two companies and say, what's going on. Got it. So I think we'll take this as a last question on how much involvement uh, and oversight is ideal for an uh, angel investor into the portfolio? That's a tricky balance uh, and depending on the chemistry and what the startup need. Often the startup founders will seek out your expertise and advice because that is what angel investors bring to the table because you are more experienced and, and, and stuff. But there could be uh, in instances when the founder knows what he does and work, what he's doing, and he just needs your validation rather than, uh, than coming in. You have to remember that you are not the driver of the business. You are only providing a perspective. And, and, you know, and I keep on telling this to investors as well as mentors that even when you're giving somebody an advice, even after you put in the money, you can't or you should not tell him or her you should always tell them that look if you do because everything in business has pluses and minuses everything will have pros and cons on the on, 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 on i mean much like everything in life even in business there will be pros and cons and one of the reasons why entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs is because they challenge the status quo they challenge what has happened in the past and therefore are able to push the boundaries and envelope on things that would perhaps sound counterintuitive so while you bring in experienced perspective, you should always encourage the entrepreneur to take his or her decision in wherever, and you should be able to sense whether the entrepreneur needs the invest the involvement or he wants you to to be a third. Of course, there has to be adequate control and and reporting mechanisms and stuff like that. But it's a true, it's a fine balance. It's therefore not about um, there is no fixed thing. It it is personality to personality on how you want to go about it. Got it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Project, for this. Uh, you know, for all the wonderful insights and uh, I see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, awesome and wonderful comments uh, coming up uh, even privately to me, uh, you know, acknowledging your talk and uh, how beautiful you explained uh, the concepts in a very clear and uh, um, a contextual manner. So thank you so much, Project, uh, for taking out time and uh, being with us i'm i'm sure that uh, uh, you know people can approach in case they they want uh, to have your uh, you know uh, mentorship or any help uh, needed absolutely thank you very much for having me around uh, i'm going to stay for a little bit for paresh's talk <laughs> as well uh, paresh good to reconnect uh, you know we've been old friends for long now Sure. Thank you so much. So now uh, uh, everyone will we will move to the next uh, part of uh, uh, the talk. So we have Paresh as well with us. Uh, so I have received a lot of specific questions related to how to uh, you know connect with Head Start and how to be a part of uh, the investor circle and how what is what is our philosophy and how we work. So we will definitely cover this part uh, after uh, uh, Paresh. Uh, uh, interacts with us and will we have Gautam with us we'll be talking more in detail towards the end of the session so you know uh, that's why I have not uh, taken up such questions uh, we'll, we'll talk about it towards the end and and now I'll, I'd like to move to the next speaker uh, Paresh Gupta a very uh, very very experienced person in this space uh, and uh, we are we are really delighted to partner with Neos Angels uh, Paresh is the founder of uh, Neos I hope Paresh is around and can hear me Yes, yes, I'm there. Absolutely. Hi, welcome. Good evening. And, uh, you know, first of all, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, um, all, all the kind mentorship and uh, the discussions which we had, uh, you know, uh, you play a very uh, pivotal role, uh, you know, in, in us, uh, you know, getting to this step and uh, taking things ahead. So I would like to acknowledge that thing, definitely. And uh, just to introduce uh, Paresh, so, you know, he has personally uh, been a, a, a big uh, uh, player in this space. He has uh, mentored uh, almost around 200 plus uh, startups in this space. 
and uh, invested in a lot of them he has been closely working with a lot of top investors uh, he has a very very good uh, experience in this space he has also closely worked with a lot of government including government of rajasthan um, and uh, you know uh, we thought uh, who else other than paresh can be can be uh, a speaker on today's forum so you know welcome paresh and he'll be talking more about uh, you know a lot of questions which which we are there Uh, which uh, you know, some of them are intentionally left so that we can ask them to Paresh, and he'll be talking more about the financial aspects. He'll be talking more about uh, how to invest, how to how do you get return, or whether you get return or not, and you know all those things. So I I give the uh, you know forum to Paresh now. Over to you, Paresh. Thank you. Oh my God! So uh, thank you so much, uh, Tushar, for these amazing words. I feel I'm part of Head Start still, and and I would love to continue to be called a Head Starter, uh, irrespective of the fact that I'm not uh, actively involved as much. So as much like Project, uh, you know, if he sees an Head Starter, yes, uh, and he's much senior. And uh, if if I'm talking after him, I'm feeling so nervous now. I'm I'm like so so nervous to <laughs> to take up certain questions, and I'm like, oh my God, uh, what's gonna happen? uh so project is for being uh, modest and you're being generous but you know yeah. i have always enthused by your energy that you bring into your conversations and your talks oh my god thank you so much but i i think i definitely feel nervous with project around with his experience if i go wrong you can, you have all the rights to correct me and i i look up to you for a lot of guidance in this world so i definitely feel so and and tushar uh, gautam the entire it start team i think you guys are doing fantastic uh i have nothing nothing but to say wow about what all you guys have been doing lately so super happy and uh, i am a part of head start no matter what you can't throw me out so i'll always be a head starter for life and uh, uh you know i want this session to be more interactive uh and i'll try anybody can you know probably try and speak up things and uh you know share things i'm going to share a couple of things and you know some of the questions which are being asked to prajak i have covered some of them i was wondering you know he has answered some of them already but i'll try to bring more finesse to it and i'll try to you know bring a little more clarity to everybody in terms of how things look like and you know how how generally uh things are looking uh, from and i'm a chartered accountant by profession plus an mba from run school of business and finance uh have been doing deals so my total deal value so far is 4.4 billion dollars uh and and uh, of course you know that was a part of various organizations i work with uh at an individual level uh, you know i have a couple of investments uh, but most of them are outside india mostly singapore and uh, the the southeast asian region uh, some of them are locally in rajasthan and i'm i'm, I'm definitely trying to support uh, so most of them are more on the mentorship capacity where i try to you know play an active role uh, rather than just being an investor that's that's exactly how i work right now uh, let me share my screen and uh, you know uh, Tushar, you need to help me to share my screen. I think it's not allowing me to show my screen right now. Uh, can you do the needful? Sure. I think Deepika or Arzu, uh, if you can please do it. Yes. So I think I would need that uh, thing. In the meanwhile, uh, you know, I would just generally ask people as to uh, what do you think? How would you define an angel investor? What What is it that you think uh, is the meaning of an angel investor? Anyone? Yeah, Parish, you are the co-host now. I think you. Wonderful. Yes, I am able to, and I hope uh, people can now see my screen as well. Yeah, we can see. Perfect. So, yes, yeah. So this is exactly where we are, and uh, please unmute yourself because I am not looking at the text questions and others. If somebody wants to, you know, uh, answer this, who, who is an angel investor as per? As per law and as per your understanding, so anybody who wants to answer this question. Uh, hello, my name is Arvind. Yes, hi Arvind. Hello. Uh, actually, uh, as far as the I know that theoretically, mm -hmm. that angel investor is somebody who has certain uh, income, uh, like uh, few, uh, few crores. Okay. And uh, and he he involves with the entrepreneur. okay uh, while investing 
okay so somebody who is who is rich who has money and he wants to uh, help a startup to uh, help him grow is called an angel uh, you know fairly well said and i think you know finance guys have uh, fantastic ways of creating words you know and giving words so there is a word called beer hug and football field and angel and seed and you know blah 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 so so let me try and walk you through a journey of a startup so that you understand where angels come in and yeah. uh, you know while i see most of the people who are who are who are here are early stage uh, investors so how do you fit into that startup journey let's start thinking about i start a startup tomorrow and uh, i probably just want 5 10 lakh rupees how would i go about doing it what i am going to do is i'm going to look into my savings i'm say oh this is the amount of money i have in my bank account then i'll go to my dad i'll go to my brother sister a lot of people around me and i'll ask them oh give me some money give me some money i need this money or you know while i'll keep exhausting my money i'll go to these guys and you know i'll keep on asking this to uh, all the other people around and uh, i'll start burning now if i'm doing something very innovative if i'm doing something disruptive at least that's what i plan to do uh, you know uh, i would definitely want i would be burning money and and if i would be burning money then uh, you know uh, i would need more and more funds and i'll i will have a burn rate once i reach that burn rate and this money is typically called seed money which has been plugged in from my pockets and my family mom dad brother sister relatives some some well wishers and somebody like that and then i reach a point where i'm like in a big big mess where i'm like at a position where if i don't put in more money my business will die and that's why these guys are called angels so they they are supposed to have wings which protects a startup to you know move from a seed stage to a plant and i think that's that's the that's the theoretical definition of uh, of an angel but i'm also going to walk you through what sebi says and let me let me share what sebi says so there is a definition given by sebi and uh, all angel funds are you know categorized as alternate investment funds category 1 so there are three categories of investments so angel funds are categorized as uh, alternate investment funds category 1 uh, which means that you have to have a minimum syndicate size of 5 crore so so minimum investment size of that fund is 5 crores uh, otherwise you cannot register yourself like an angel fund with sebi so i think that is a very important distinction that if you want to invest something lower then uh, then you know uh, then you need to figure out other alternative ways and i'm going to talk about all of that because i saw all of these questions where uh, people were asking how to invest smaller amounts how to invest in you know lesser lesser numbers so if i were to do those lesser numbers i would definitely you know we we'll, we we'll talk about this but if you were to re register yourself like an angel fund uh, you would want to have a minimum of 5 crores every angel investor in that fund has to put in at least 25 lakhs right so so that is again a uh, you know minimum requirement to be a part of an angel fund like an angel like a registered angel and if you get registered so there are reasons to get registered like an angel investment or an angel fund uh because you get tax exemptions so so all the capital gains at the time of exit and we'll talk about exits also in a little while uh but while you exit you would need to you know all the capital gains would come in handy only if you are registered as an angel investor uh, otherwise that that capital gain tax is still taxable it remains taxable i'll tell you further requirements to be an angel investor uh, if you are a professional who's working and who's working in any organization Uh, and if you're a professional you need to typically have 10 years of experience or you should have been a serial entrepreneur or you should have been a serial investor in startups and you should have a tangible assets of 2 crores so it's not about net worth but it's about tangible assets of 2 crores to be qualified as an investor by sebi now i'm sure a lot of you would be thinking oh i don't fit into this category you know even even i i do not invest as an angel as a registered angel with a lot of places so so i would not do that now how do i do that then if i still because my theoretical definition said i want to help a startup and of course i want to definitely make money and i want to definitely grow my investments i am looking at it like an investment portfolio but if i am trying to help a startup to grow and i do not have this much amount of money or i do not wish to invest in this amount of money then what is it that i can do so there are smaller amounts and and for that there are two typical options which people do one is to join angel networks and there are multiple angel networks in the country i think uh, this could not have been a better time uh, you know to see but but i think you know every city would have like two or three angel networks today so so everywhere there are angel networks and they are constantly working and uh, they're constantly there to uh, you know uh, 
to to help out angels and and first time investors to come together uh, you know try to invest it through through syndicates and how does it happen so now let's say for example you want to invest in a startup and uh, these angel networks keep scouting for opportunities so they would definitely keep thinking about there's one investor some opportunity blah 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 and they'll try to find one or two lead investors they may typically be those registered angels who are authorized and recognized as angels they are they are well acquainted with the ecosystem and project very rightly said that you should always try to you know go invest with other people so that you can learn from their experience and and so i think typically what happens is these angel networks would find one or two lead investors and then smaller investors start joining in because they have faith and believe in this bigger investor they understand that you know this guy knows his stuff and and that's exactly where you know the other start joining uh all the money lot of times if it is not rooted through a fund then it is placed in an llp so so most of them create an spv which is an llp creation so there's a new llp registered and this llp the money is placed into this llp and this llp then invest into that startup and at the time of exit you kind of just probably sometimes sell off the llp or you probably kind of change the partnership in llp or you know you do all the changes that you require to do uh there's another route and uh, what's also started happening recently is uh, that all lot of angel networks and angel platforms and you know uh, and there are multiple terms now being used uh, so they they give platforms and they have opened up platforms where they have created platforms for first time investors newer investors to just join in and you know put in their money and invest this money through this particular vehicle so 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 that that vehicle can register itself like a fund that uh, or that vehicle and in fact angel investors could also be corporates so if you have a uh, you know business worth 10 crore plus then that 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 corporate can also be an angel as a registered angel and that vehicle acts as you know an agent so so people can collectively form this vehicle with uh, a business worth 10 crores and net worth of 10 crores is what i guess i i remember correctly and uh, then you can route your money through this vehicle so so this is the other route for smaller investors that you can you can do two or three things technically so what you can do is you can either join a bigger angel network and you know invest co invest with a bigger larger investor that's number one number two you can just form a small llp put in your funds together and use that llp like a vehicle and invest like that uh, third you can actually go to a corporate angel which is a registered corporate angel use that as a vehicle and invest in in the startups and you can probably take a stake or co invest or whatever and and you you get all the benefits of uh, a registered angel so i think this is this is what is there for the smaller investment size uh let me try and move to the next one now the question is uh you know and project was very very strongly supporting the idea of co investments for first timers i would i would agree and i would not agree less to him uh that you should co invest initially uh invest so so i i'll tell you i i work with so many so many people as a chartered accountant also as a finance professional also i get a lot of people coming to me and say i i only invest in you know medical companies and medical devices because my business is medical devices and i have only invested in two startups now i think that is a very very risky proposition because unless it is a vertical integration and if it's if you're seeing an exit or probably thinking of buying out that company in future it doesn't make sense and that's a first level instance for any entrepreneur today so i think i've seen this happening with most of the entrepreneurs where they see oh i am in the sector so let me invest in this particular sector only and they 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 forget that you know probably there is no integration always or are you planning to buy this company out at all and if you're not planning to buy out this company if you're not planning to own this company then then treat it like an investment which is different so if you were to invest in a stock market or a mutual fund you really don't invest in the same sector companies that you are in you probably have a diversified portfolio and that's that's investing otherwise you are doing your business you are not an investor so so you have to start understanding the difference between the two that if you are investing in in a sector which is your business sector and you only understand that sector then you are technically just doing your business it's an expansion of your business but if you are investing investing then you should you should see the potential of that particular venture independent of your business and i think that's the that's a very very typical thing uh co investment helps you in doing that so it helps you to analyze startups it helps you to see how mature investors 
you know serial entrepreneurs serial investors look at things how do they evaluate these opportunities uh, and and you know the other part is see if if somebody is senior i have seen that happening most of the times you know exit becomes much easier so you'll be surprised but uh, you know ironically the the angel money at, at the middle tier funds in the country has dried down so i think there are a lot of angels and there are a lot of vcs and the middle bracket somewhere is definitely exhausted that that is a missing piece right now and you know what is happening is so there are early stage investors that typically seed investors 5 lakh 10 lakh 15 lakh rupees investors and then there are straight away you know 7 crores 10 crore investors and and the middle middle tier tier is is facing a problem and both these tiers even the middle tier and the earlier tier is facing a problem of exits that these guys initially invest a small amount of money now whom to sell it to if you go along with a serial entrepreneur if you go along with a serial investor he will invariably have those connects to take it to the next steps right so so that's a very important aspect to do a tag along and and you know be along people so that you get better exits and uh, that's what i always suggest that if you're trying to invest have a pool of at least two three people you also can intellectually think and discuss and talk right because just one person's opinion as project said there is no this is no math here so so unfortunately startup stories are very very random and and somebody will come with a gaming solution on uh, how to teach playing teen patti online and that's a fantastic business model uh and it works and a, a and a gaming company which uh, which has great potentials or may not have any potentials at all so so you would definitely need to talk to people you would definitely need to take that knowledge and that definitely helps out so yeah i think uh, am i going fine so far uh yeah tushar or anybody can just give me a comment note something yeah i think i think we are fine maybe we can uh, the audience Perfect. yeah so I, better yeah all right uh so how do you look at valuing the startup and i think this was a very important question uh which uh, which which was asked and uh, you know how do you really look at valuing a startup now very difficult answer i think if if there is anybody and when when i so i was in london and uh, i returned back some 8 9 years back 8 years back and uh when i came back i was completely zapped with the way valuations were happening in the country and i was like oh really how how is this coming out this, this number doesn't make sense it doesn't add up and people are still investing and some of them really made money in this process and a lot of people burned the money as well so 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 there was no there is no scientific mechanism uh if this was a standard business there are multiple methods so so if i were to tell you standard valuation methods there is a dcf and a cash flow discounting method then you know we have relative valuations and we have asset based valuations then we have multiple based valuations and we kind of do odv odrc and you know as a finance professional that's exactly what i've been doing all my life uh where there are multiple tools available for valuing a standard business but when it comes to startup it's all about i genuinely feel the team what is the roi potential because business plans keep evolving they just keep changing every day what you start today would be absolutely different tomorrow what what you really need to worry about is a team can this team do something and how do you get your roi your roi is nothing but exit so there is nothing in the middle so so please understand there will be no regular dividends there will be no regular returns unless you are investing in definitely debt based and you know i think uh, head start will organize more sessions on you know debt based investments and other things but uh, unless you are you know uh, investing in debt based instruments or convertibles and things like that your only money will come at the time of exit so how easy it is for that business to exit is what is going to be very very important for an investor most of the times i have seen people people see the potential people see the growth everything is great but there is no exit and i have also seen startups failing businesses failing because they just could not agree on the right exit plans and exit is the most that's the only way to get the roi so 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 get the exit plans right right also see the scalability are you getting you know is the business at all possibly going to become 10x if it is not going to become possibly 10x and and you know as as mentioned by project is it is it going to be the leader in the sector is it is it that big or it does it have the potential to become that big or not if it is not going to be a significant player if it is not going to be the biggest player in the market your exits will be as limited as that and then you might probably be losing money big time so then the idea on sustainability and competition is is again relative to all of this but i definitely would say 
first three, which is the team, the exit options, and the scalability are the most important, which will determine your ROI potential as to how much ROI can you expect out of this. And uh, research, so research about various sectors, research about you know variety of things, research about the business before you start valuing. There are multiple mechanisms now. Uh, so one of the models which has really become popular is to give a value to everything. So, so that's that's one of the models which is which is being proposed these days, which is about okay, value the team. This team, four guys, they are worth ten lakh rupees each. So, forty lakh rupees is the valuation of the team. Then they have this product. They have designed an app. This app will be selling for this much. Okay, so let's assign another value of let's say twenty lakhs for this app. Then this particular thing. Then this one. Then the goodwill. Then the domain. Then this. Then this. Then this. And that's one of the ways that a lot of people do uh, valuations uh, at a very early stage, which is uh, which is also happening. I don't know. I I don't subscribe to it, but yes, uh, people do invest uh, in this format. You have to research about the business. You have to understand the sector. You have to understand uh, where we are going and uh, how things are shaping up. Uh, and this is. this is where the most important aspect is exit options how do you really look at exit options into the business uh, and you know in fact gotham wanted me to speak specifically about exit options for uh, investors in into into the startup fraternity how will it happen start thinking that how would you how would you at all exit once you've invested good great you found out the right business idea you figured out some things you you had all the other things in place now what happens now one thing so typical is horizontal vertical integration which is where you know businesses in the same sector similar sector and horizontal and vertical are uh, you know similar that you know uh, vertical is in the same value chain so so your suppliers and your buyers probably buy you out and and they are somewhere above or below you horizontal is they are parallel to you so if there is an m and a opportunity you merge with them you and acqui hire happens in this case where the team and entire thing is shifted to another business and this is a very common thing which has started happening which is where people and businesses have started saying okay rather than starting something new let's acquire a startup itself because you know so larger business acquires a smaller startup which complements their overall business and that's a pretty good uh, you know exit plan for a angel or a seed investor because if you want your startup to if you want to really make money early and have sustainable money there it will not give you super high valuations it will not give you super high returns but it will give you sustainable returns and there was also another question of out of you know what is the percentage of you know startups once you invest uh, you know would would succeed or not succeed i'll give you you know the way i would look at you know portfolios of most of the people around let's say if you are investing in 10 i think one will do great right and and uh, so one out of 10 will be a great guy he will be you know uh, the white horse and it will be like doing fantastic some 3 4 would be average giving you returns decent returns better returns than the market and uh, sensible you like you see potential but they you know they will have this uh, you know then you will have two or three where you see the value but others cannot see it i mean so so that's a typical problem which i see with most of the investors where they say i see a value i see the value i see the value but 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 they're still struggling to find those investors because they're in the wrong sector for example so i know a lot of cab companies Oh my God! They're beautiful companies. They have fantastic business models. They're profit-generating businesses, and they're not getting investments just because Ola and Uber are there. And the sector is so crazy right now that you know people are so everybody else at the next level are scared of investing in startups like this. So, so this is what happens uh, for them. And then there'll be one or two which will be like the ugly ducklings, and uh, they will be struggling. And uh, you know that that's the typical proportion of a portfolio which I see, but it can vary from you know angel networks to angel network, individual to individual, people to people, everyone it changes. Now let's look at the acquisition by competition. Some of them, once the market becomes hot, then people start you know doing things uh, uh, you know through competition and aggressive competition. And uh, if if the competition intensifies, uh, there are times when this can be an opportunity, and there are times when it can be a disaster. So so this can be a you know good bad ugly situation depending on the point of exit uh, but yes acquisition by competitors is a fantastic option for some people then it's a sta the, the standard path is funding by vcs and senior investors so then you know level 1 to level 2 and level 3 and level 4 so series a b c d e happens and keeps happening and people changing hands so the business keeps passing on like a ball from one investor to the other investor to the other investor and they all look at you know valuing it higher and higher and higher and uh, giving exit to the previous ones and so so you know a lot of most of the businesses follow this so if you see a big giant today it would have gone through this series of series a b c d e 
by passing on the startup from one investor to the other investor and that's that's another thing and the last one which i want to say is ipos uh, which is a very new thing a lot of people don't know about this so what has happened is that last year government announced startup exchange so so we earlier had only the bigger companies exchange then we had a sme exchange and now we have a startup exchange and you can actually invest in startups also through that exchange and you can also exit from these startups by coming out with an ipo of that startup which you have invested in so that becomes a fantastic story there are very few startups right now because it's too early right now uh, and and i see that that's the that's a super potential where uh, there could be startups which can exit through a startup exchange come out with an ipo the requirements are much lesser uh, the funding requirements and the base capital requirement and profitability requirement are much lower than what is required for an sme or a mme or a large cap uh, business so so you can definitely think about you know setting up uh, and 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 you know exiting through a startup exchange and and listing your company through an ipo uh, into the public market uh, and let's come to the numbers and i think i am a number man so this is this is the last thing which i want to share with you guys before i kind of you know uh, stop talking and take more questions uh, in terms of how typically numbers happen okay so so there is no ballpark and it's just one of the methods where and this is this is a very crude method believe me this is like back calculation this is no uh, this is no standard calculation but uh, but this is a back calculation method if you were to invest and somebody comes to you so let's let's take an assumption that somebody comes to you with a requirement of 1 million dollars and they say i am looking for a 1 million dollar fund from you uh, and tell me how much equity stake would you want right so and funding requirement is typically what the startup should be able to quantify if you find a startup which says i don't know how much money i need please don't invest in a startup like that i mean it's very very simple they should have a very clear plan they should have a very aggressive or a, you know systematic structured plan saying this is the amount of money that we want to invest in the next one year two years to execute the plan that we want to execute uh, so so that investment amount is fine don't believe in the numbers that they quote they might say 5% and 10% and 20% somebody would have guided them and that's that's not uh, that's not what you have to worry about you should worry about this investment quantum and say 1 million dollars is what this guy is asking for and you're looking at an in exit horizon of let's say 5 years and 5 years is a typical horizon uh, which you should expect uh, to exit so so we are saying 1 million dollars is what we invest through either individually or through a syndicate or through a fund or whatever exiting in the fifth year and now let's start doing the valuations of the business a uh, very crude numbers but let's start thinking that this business has the potential to reach 20 million dollars revenue in 5 years so don't worry about the revenue now they could be loss making businesses they may be non revenue generating businesses but let's try to imagine that if this 1 million dollar is put into the business then they would be able to generate 20 million dollar revenues in 5 years time and if we believe in that so so believe in those numbers or have discussions with these startups you know understand how you can help them to reach that number uh, but if we can reach this number then we are looking at a revenue of 20 million and a net profit of let's say 10% which is 2 million so so we are looking at a 2 million profitability in the fifth year right for a 1 million dollar investment this is where we reach and and we kind of say okay if i invest 1 million dollar you will reach a net profit of 2 million dollars now most of the industries have a pe ratio and by 5 years by by the 5th year definitely that business will be established business so so today it may not be today it is a you know a startup and it is early stage and it doesn't have pe ratios and doesn't have comparatives and things like that but 5 years later you would not have the same trajectory it would reach a point where it is it should be a stable business it should reach a point where it is it is a structured business and and we are looking at a 15x and it could be 10x 20x whatever so so each industry has a pe ratio uh, in the startup world definitely if you are not looking at a pe ratio of you know 10 15 20 we are not in the game at all right so so let's start thinking that if the pe ratio pe is price to earning ratio which is the multiplier of profits so we are and it could be a revenue multiple also it could be ebitda multiple also and we can do more detailed discussions uh, you know one on one or otherwise to talk about you know how these ratios are calculated but uh, let's say it's a pe ratio of 15 and net profit is 2 million then the value of the company is 30 million right at the end of at, at the end of 5th year so we are not valuing this company to this 30 million valuation is not today this valuation is Fifth year, fifth year valuation. So, so never, never, you know, believe that this thirty million is the valuation of the company. This is the valuation in the fifth year of the company. Now, if you have invested one million dollars and you are at least expecting ten x returns, 
So it is your required ROI. You should at least get 10 million worth of valuation in five years. So, so your 1 million should become 10 million and your company value is 30 million. So the percentage stake that you require in this company is 33%. So it's as simple as this. Now you are investing $1 million for a 33% stake. So the valuation of the company is $2 million. And I think that's a typical way to quote your valuations to any startup and uh, you can, you can actually go ahead with this. So, uh, I mean, it, I might sound slightly more complex for the non-finance guys and, you know, we can do a more detailed discussion, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse of uh, how a typical VC method numbers look like and uh, how they are typically valued. Uh, but that's about it from my side, as far as, you know, uh, the, 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 the knowledge part is concerned and, you know, one side monologue is concerned. I'm happy to take more questions and, you know, try to answer as much. And if project is around, you can help me and support me. Here are my contact details, uh, ca.paresh at Gmail, and uh, you can Google me out. Uh, uh, so fortunately, uh, I, I, I am fairly, fairly available on Google and, uh, decent results on Google. So, so yes, if you just type Paresh Gupta on Google, you'll find my name and a lot of links to connect. So LinkedIn would be the best option. We can definitely catch up. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it from my side. So yeah, I I'm happy uh, to share Gautam on you now. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much, Paresh. Uh, uh, really uh, a very complimentary session, I would say, and very wonderfully, uh, you know, you took us through uh, the various steps. Uh, so uh, let us take a couple of questions, which uh, which we are. I was also getting in personal as well as uh, in the forum. So let us see how we can uh, you know help them out. So one question from Omkar is, uh, I am an NRI, and how can I get involved in Head Start or any other angel investment network? So for Head Start specifically, obviously we'll discuss. But like in general for NRIs, what is the model and what are the rules? So I think you know. Uh... FII is allowed, okay, and uh, most so, so it goes by sector by sector. So that that's one thing that uh, there are certain sectors where you can't invest, and that is prescribed by the government. So so let's say for example agriculture, you may not own land in the country, uh, but you can invest in agriculture companies to a particular percentage extent. So if you really want to directly engage in some of the companies like that, you can do that. Uh, it will vary on sector to sector, but most of the cases you can directly invest in a fund. So investing in a fund in India is 100% legal. So if you invest through an angel fund, so you register yourself like an angel uh, angel, and uh, or, or rooted through an angel fund, absolutely allowed. You can be an angel investor. There is no restriction on if you are an NRI, then you can't be an angel. That's not, that's not the case. You're absolutely allowed to do that. Investing through a fund, investing through a SPV is 100% allowed. Right? So, so most of the finance organizations, if you are rooting it through a company, which is... Uh, you know, doing that, it's all right. Sometimes there are cases, let's say, for example, defense, you know, retail, agriculture, where if there is an NRI investment fund involved, then the government will have certain restrictions. So I think those are the only restrictions which are there right now. Uh, but I, in fact, believe me, most of the most of the angel networks and accelerators that I work with uh, would have NRIs. Right. So, so India is dependent on NRIs for all the funding and money coming in. So it's absolutely legal allowed and you can straight away register and and go ahead with the funding part i don't think there is any re restriction except for certain sectors which is uh, which is sector specific great so uh, uh, harshala had asked a question on how to smart small like what is the first step so now okay i want to become a, a investor now how do i start so i think you know two things to do one is you have to first decide whom do you want to co invest with right that's the most important thing don't try to just say i want to invest on my own so I think find some partners, find some friends, find some people. Now, how do you find them is a question. So my question is, it could be a Head Start network proposition. It could be through other networks, some angel network, some other group, whoever you can connect with. And you should, you should try to say, okay, these are the set of people I can connect with. And I would want to work with these guys because this set of people is interesting. So this is one set that please, please have some network. Don't do it alone, right? Then define your minimum capital size. So you kind of say, okay, 10 lakhs. 2 lakhs, 5 lakhs, right? Now, and the other thing to research on is the ideologies because I'll tell you every different angel network goes on with, uh, you know, a different ideology. Somebody is looking at a sector specific thing. Somebody is looking at a fund size spe specific thing. Somebody has a different exit plan strategy. Somebody has a different investment ideology there. You have to start thinking about which ideology matches to you, right? And if you think, okay, this idea, so, and you'll be surprised, but, Today, what is happening is all the angel networks, if you just go to them once and tell them, I want to be one angel investor, they will start blowing and you know blasting you with emails. 
and they'll start showing off startups and startups and start, start, startups after one after the other. And there are demo days happening and there are these uh, startup pitching sessions happening and you can just go there and see and, and have fun somewhere. So, so I think start having fun first. And, and my answer is just go as an investor, listen to the pitches, see how convinced are you about those pitches and, and see those demos. Because, and then talk to people who have really invested or talk to people who are knowledgeable, whom you can reach out to and whom you can believe in. Uh, and then start thinking about that. Okay, then you kind of zero down. Yeah, I like this startup, or I like this sector, or I like these five ten sectors. I have this much amount of money. Define that money, park it at the moment as as the minimum amount of money, and initially do not invest in a startup as a lead investor. You should not become the lead. Have a startup which already has a lead, and be the co-lead, be the ancillary investor. So that you can actually latch on to somebody else, so that you have a better exit, you have a better thought process. So, so my answer is, and and there are a lot of so we get all these leads all the time. You know, we keep getting these leads where where they say, okay, the lead investor is already ready. We are left with another fifty lakh rupees buffer. We are left with another twenty lakh rupees buffer. The the lead investor is willing to invest seventy. We are looking for another thirty. Now, that's exactly when a lot of angels come in. So you can actually go and you know reach out to these uh, startups which already have found a lead investor, and you can be the co lead. You can be the partner in that. Uh, and I think that is what you should do at the uh, initial level. Got it. So Parag has this question and he's asking about, is there a platform like mutual fund uh, where I can put money and they invest on my behalf? Like you give money to someone and they invest for you. Uh, so technically yes. And technically no, because uh, if you, if you really look at an official formal fund like that, other than an angel fund, nobody can do that. That's illegal. Right. Okay. So, so you cannot have a fund like that where, uh, so in fact, mutual funds also today, other than mutual funds, you cannot actually have somebody else manage your portfolio. So portfolio management by somebody who's not authorized to be a proper formal portfolio manager is now become illegal. This was happening earlier rampantly. And, and I think the whole, whole SEBI regulations have become very tight in terms of allowing somebody to manage your investments. They can only give you advice. They can give you support. They can uh, assist you. They can share their portfolios, but they cannot invest on your behalf. Uh, mm. Definitely angel funds are allowed to do this. So, so that is one option. Second option is SPVs. There are SPVs available. So in fact, all the accelerators, if you look at accelerators, they typically work and they're sector specific accelerators mostly, right? So those sector specific accelerators also create an SPV. So they create an LLP where they take money from the people and they say, okay, put in the money and this SPV is now authorized to invest in this particular sector. So, so, uh, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt. so we, uh, we heard this word SPV uh, a lot from you. So I would want you to, you know, elaborate us. Maybe some of us might not be knowing about what is SPV. And oh, wonderful. Okay. So SPV by full form is called special purpose vehicle, right? It is nothing but either an LLP or a company created, uh, with a pool of things, right? So for example, Tushar and I and Gautam and Arvind and Prajat come together and we want to invest in XYZ startup but we don't invest directly. We create this company here or we create this LLP, which is called the SPV. Now this SPV, I'll authorize, so all five of us authorize this SPV to invest on our behalf. So this becomes the manager also, this becomes the uh, special syndicate also, you can call it any other name. Uh, it can be an accelerator uh, format, it could be any other format where you just authorize this, uh, this particular SPV to, to work on your behalf because you don't have the time to do things all by yourself. Uh, but yes, you will definitely be a part of the decision-making process because you would want to be, and, uh, this SP will ask you questions and, you know, have a board meeting and you will be one of the investors or shareholders in this one. So, so yes, uh, it will have to come back to you and ask you questions related to it. So there was one earlier question, uh, on how to build investment team. How to build an, uh, so uh, can you elaborate on this question one? From my side would be, uh, do we need to build an investment team if we are like, a you know, uh, individual, uh, individual looking to invest. So do we need to build an investment team? So that is a second question. Uh, so my answer is, uh, I think you should not, you don't need to build an investment team. I think, uh, you know, uh, you definitely need to take your own decisions and learn a lot more about it because I think it is your money. How would you invest? Otherwise, of course, portfolio man. So if you, if you go through an angel fund route, it's a different story. They have these, uh, you know, uh, investors and teams and they are specifically there. So, so if you go through these SPVs or the angel funds, they already have a team, which is design designation and, and they're definitely trained to do this. So there are portfolio managers who are trained to do this. If you're trying to invest at your own level, uh, depends on the money and that investment team will come expensive. 
So my answer is yes. Uh, if you try to hire somebody who is proficient in startups, he will not come cheap. So that and and the then the returns in the startup fund is not happening so early. So so definitely you know uh, that is that is something which which you'll have to look at. Um, so so I think I, I I think learn a bit initially at this moment people should start learning. That's why these investor circles are important where people start having the basic knowledge, and then you can consult certain people. So see once you have the base knowledge, then you can give a call to people. You know you can you can you can hire people for an hour. You can hire people. For a one hour, two hour basis, you know, I I do that for a lot of people. So I personally get so many calls from so many people who say, okay, give us like a fifth one hour every fifteen days to discuss our finance, and that's fine. So you can actually then take these uh, experts on board and and help them out. Uh, but yeah, managing a full team, you need to be really rich. Awesome. So uh, one question on uh, what is angel fund? Any examples? Like if you can, if you can share some examples on angel funds. Uh, to add to that question, if you can, if you can also differentiate us between you. You talked about right angel uh, funds, and then we talked about angel network or you know some special purpose vehicle. So can you name a couple of them and uh, differentiate? So I think, see, please understand that the difference between a fund versus a network, uh, fund versus network versus VCs or the categories of investments that we look at, is dependent on the SEBI regulations. Okay, so everything that you do, if you are looking at an angel fund, then it has to be registered with SEBI, right? And uh, uh, that is one thing which which you need to do. Network is something which is just, uh, you know. Uh, Uh, you know, uh, typically, what what would I say? So networks are typically people who come together. That's it. They're just connected with each other, and they're just kind of you know building it together. Now there is a capital requirement, and the capital requirement or the fund requirements in most of these organizations vary. So so I think you know uh, what happens typically is uh, if you are investing as an angel fund, you have a, also a cap of twenty five crores. So you can't invest beyond that. So you have a minimum cap as well as an upper cap. Uh, you also can have only forty nine investors in it, so you can't go beyond that number. Uh, angel network can be any number; it can go at any length, and it can it can go to any limits. Uh, on the other hand, VCs have to be hundred crores, so twenty five to hundred crores and above. So if you if your minimum fund size is above that, then only you are a VC fund. So so that is how it goes on, right? Now what happens is all of these so Indian angel net, so all of them create their funds, and they create their angel funds. So now IEN would have a fund. indian angel network would have a fund right so project was a part of it so so mumbai angels would have a fund of its own and that is so so there is a rain so so again network and a fund and they create these funds themselves so if you see a network they will invariably be associated with certain funds to invest lot of times so that's the simplest simplest way of uh, you know working this out so so if you see a network they will be connected to a fund uh, and they'll be funding even a lot of big vcs have started creating mini angel funds in fact in all of these bigger companies so today uh, adanis would have an angel fund you know and uh, ambanis would have an angel fund where you know certain angels would come there they'll say okay let's invest in certain things so so yes they have they have done things like that understood i hope that answered the question so with this i think uh, paresh uh, you know i would like to thank you for uh, you know the wonderful insights and uh, you know once again acknowledge uh, you being uh once a head starter and always a head starter uh, philosophy which you are following so thank you so much for that paresh and uh, uh you know for some specific questions which we are i, I am getting a lot of questions in uh, private related to head start investor circle and how head start can support so uh you know let us move to that uh, part wherein uh we can talk more uh, about head start and uh, you know how you people can be a part uh, and how head start can otherwise uh, help you all uh we we are coming up with a couple of community forum to support you all in general so i would uh, i would invite gautam for uh, the same paresh i would request you to uh, you know be there with us uh, you know uh, and uh, just in case uh, you feel like please add on to gautam and uh, whatever we are discussing yeah so before gautam steps in i will in fact say that you know i feel so happy that you know this is something which i have been you know pushing head start for the last 7 8 years and i was the first man uh, to to start saying please please do something with investors and you know rather than just start startup communities that's the piece which is missing with us uh, so i think that's fantastic and i'm i'm so happy with this neo set start partnership where 
you know we have decided to you know do things together uh, and help investors in the best way we can so so yes uh, more than happy to be of any assist and any help any point of time uh, and gotham is, is a superman so i think he will uh, he'll be able to answer 99% of the questions i'm sure he's, he's like he's a, he's a ca himself so he he knows a lot of stuff and yeah look forward to his talk thank you so uh, i would i would like to introduce gotham to all of you all uh, gotham uh, is on board head start is a director uh, on head start uh, uh, network and he is also uh, leading the startup initiatives for infosys bpm and he has he has a lot of uh, expertise in this space so i would i would request gotham to you know interact with you all and uh, talk more about uh, head start about head start investor circle and uh, you know a lot of uh, them are asking about uh, how to uh, be a part of the circle and how to get benefited and all so gotham over to you thank you so much kushal you know i've been uh... listening in for the last two hours i think you know thank you so much to project and parish you know the the depth that, uh, at which they were able to go in right in the first session i think uh, honestly goosebumps being a community person uh, really happy to you know get started with uh, investor circle uh, at head start and uh, you know need to acknowledge parish as well i still remember uh, my conversation with parish 5 years ago uh, in jaipur when parish led uh, pitch city at head start uh you know that is where we were looking at how how do we go deeper in terms of enabling uh, you know the access to fund uh, you know for the startup ecosystem uh, of course a lot of lot of things that we've been doing at head start and finally uh, you know we were able to launch this investor circle i think uh, timing matters and something that i would like to echo project and, and parish as well so they've been amazing support to head start and the ecosystem uh, and you know from from an investor circle perspective i think the timing is perfect primarily because there are so many early stage startups that have been grow you know blossoming within the country uh, and the biggest problem you know that all of them come up with has been uh, you know the issue of not being able to raise the first check right so 24/7 that's what i do i closely work with uh, you know early stage startups be it uh, at work or uh, through head start and the biggest problem has been you know the inability to raise the first check and that is primarily because you know uh, the lack of being able to bridge the right startup to the right investor right so there are a lot of us who you know have that uh, uh, surplus disposable income that we can you know invest in in startups and there are startups that need the money and and you know why are these transactions not happening right so that is what led us to uh, going ahead and formalizing this entire base and said you know why don't we launch head start investor circle very simple agenda here you know for the last uh, 14 years we've been helping startups and uh, you know every month we keep doing demo days uh, but you know that focus was primarily at a pre seed way uh, helping startups raise that million dollars or half a million dollars you know and and that is where working closely with about 40 different funds you know at start comes in handy because we are able to help startups raise the second or third check and once we started working very closely with a lot of incubators you know like what tushar said close to about 80 to 100 incubators that start works closely with today uh, the biggest problem with the incubators is you know the startups are not able to raise that first check now the first check could be somewhere about 10 to 15 20 lakh to about 50 lakh and uh, that is where you know a lot of angels five angels coming together putting in money i think that will be uh, a game changer right uh, so one of the visions that at hetsar we taken up on ourselves is this decade we really want to power about 100000 startups uh, you know in 2020 2030 and and we believe powering these 100000 startups is going to be possible only by all of you on this call uh, you know the angel investors uh, in 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 real terms you are the angels for a lot of startups right so the entrepreneurs are here to think big and, and solve for the problem it is the angels who are you know going to help them uh, sustain through the, those initial months and initial years where they probably you know haven't broken even right so 10000 new investors in the country is our vision uh, and and something that we are looking at through investor circle is very clear uh, on one end let's uh, keep bringing these sessions i'm sure you know this session was pretty useful for all of you in terms of getting introduction to uh, you know the angel investment space the idea is every saturday going forward you know we're going to have uh, a session for you by some senior 
uh, you know, investor in the uh, ecosystem. It could be an investor, it could be a CA or a legal person. Uh, basically, someone pretty experienced in this space. Uh, someone we know well and, you know, we can trust that they're going to guide you in the right, right way. Every Saturday going forward, you know, there will be an investor circle catch-up. You know, one hour, one and a half hours, you're going to catch up and go deep, answer questions, uh, cover one specific area that is very important for you to, uh, you know, upskill yourself or know as an investor. And on the other front, we are, you know, continuously having a lot of workshops uh, for the startups you know, in terms of uh, getting them investment ready. Right? I think both are equally important. On, on one side, get the investors ready to be able to invest. On the other side, get the startups ready to be able to, uh, you know, impress the investors and be, you know, fundable. Right? So both of these, there's a lot of effort that Techstart is, is putting. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of demo days, sector-focused demo days going forward every month. Uh, so broadly, you know, in terms of, of course, Tusha has already spoken about what Headstart is. Uh, but I just wanted to take a couple of questions in terms of, uh, that came up in terms of investor circles. So the idea is to, you know, create on one end, definitely educate more people to, you know, know about investing. But the more intense one is to actually make these deals happen, right? So as a part of the investor circle, they're going to have, uh, you know, official members on board, you know, people who are really keen about investing. So, you know, phase one is people who wish to learn. Uh, and, you know, there's absolutely nothing. All of us who wish to learn are always welcome. You know, we've been uh, for the community always. People who are serious about investing, you know, they come on board as a, uh, you know, as a member of the investor circle, right? So it's a very simple, uh, you know, set of uh, conditions and clauses that we have, very transparent, very simple set of conditions. The idea is all of us should be able to, you know, give back to the community and invest in startups, right? So that's why we made it very simple. Uh, so, you know, right after this session, in 10 minutes, Right after the session, you would receive a mail from us that talks about the Investor Circle membership. And uh, if you think that is of value to you and you're serious about investing, then you should go ahead and apply to be a member. Right. So again, uh, just wanted to make, clarify it. People who wish to learn more about investing, attend our Saturday session. It's free of cost for you. Right. Attend a few more sessions before you're really confident of investing. People who want to start exploring investing, uh, you know, go ahead and become a member of the investor circle you know uh, you will start being invited to you know a lot of the demo days that keep happening you will keep getting access to a lot of uh, deal flows or, or startup deals right so uh, and then you'll be introduced to more people in the uh, you know investor circle we have start investor circle that uh, actually you know are regular investors and you can co-invest with them so that's broadly, you know, in terms of the introduction to inve uh, the investor circle. Uh, of course, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it very simple and, and get you guys on board at the, uh, at the earliest. Uh, so obviously we are, uh, you know, we, we got, got a good discount for the membership that usually is there at the Head Start Investor Circle. And these are usually annual memberships, right? So there's a 50% membership for people who attend these uh, sessions because, you know, you've learned what it takes to invest. Uh, so this is more of a seriousness fee because, you know, typically you end up investing about, you know, 10, 15, 20 lakhs, uh, you know, in startups and, uh, you know, 10K is nothing. It's more of a seriousness fee for us to see, are you really sure about investing in startups? Uh, and, and if you are, then we will start giving you, you know, startups that you can evaluate uh, or take our support to evaluate and uh, invest, right? So, that's broadly what it is. And of course, how we do it, you know, uh, Tushar, if you can go to the funnel uh, slide, you know, I'll just quickly give them an idea of typically what happens at Head Start, right? So, uh, you know, Head Start is India's largest, uh, you know, ecosystem enabler. You know, we've got presence in about 50 different cities or 50 chapters. Uh, at the grassroots, you know, we keep working with startups, creating programs. We work closely with a lot of incubators and we work directly with, you know, startups. The idea is to keep creating, uh, you know, a pipeline of investable startups, right? So we work with these startups and then finally we, uh, you know, uh, work on micro accelerators, our own micro accelerators, startups from incubators, get into the micro accelerators. Uh, and then there's a lot of hands-on support that typically goes in, uh, you know, through our mentor pool, you know, pretty massive mentor pool. And finally, you know, they're put in front of investors every month, right? Uh, Post-investment, typically uh, what happens is, 
for the next 6 to 12 months uh, these startups typically need growth stage support uh, you know uh, a lot of lot of the funds that typically are raised uh, are primarily used on sales and marketing in, you know in this stage and that is where uh, you know head start micro cohorts or micro accelerators come in and a lot of the startups that you know are raising funds through the investor circle will end up being accelerated through our own micro accelerator so the idea is it doesn't stop with just uh, you know finding a startup for the relevant investor but once the investment happens it's about how can we continue to work with them with access to the right mentors right experts uh, you know right uh, distribution channels right uh, it could be access to some corporates it could be uh, you know access to accelerators access to vcs uh, you know you would have also seen that exits typically happen when 12 18 months later they pitch to another set of investors and and you exit right so these are things that typically happen you know once you come on board onto your investor circle in some cases you would be able to add value directly you know because your it's your domain in some cases you may not be able to add value and that's where you know an ecosystem player like headstart comes in uh, provides access to its mentors and its experts and it's a, its network of corporate to these startups that you know are going through the investor circle so that's broadly uh, you know what what the investor circle is about and it's very simple for you to come on board uh, like i said you would receive a mail in the next 20 minutes uh, if you're interested you know there are questions if you're interested go ahead and respond to the mail uh, you know and then you will have a simple form like your kyc it's important for us also to understand our investor members right so it's a very simple form that allows us to know you better and once you fill that you know probably in about 48 hours to 72 hours you would have one of us reaching out to you uh, you know on a one on one call where we run you through the the next steps and the process uh, and take any questions that you may have right so uh, that's broadly what it is and of course uh, you know once you come on board and uh, you know again echoing what paresh and project said uh, learn to co invest because that's where we've also seen great success uh, you know try bringing in people that you think could add value to the startup right it could be someone who is a domain expert uh, someone who is who is really good in sales someone who is probably good in, in in another specific niche area that the startup requires bring them on board co invest with them uh, just ensure that each of you are able to add value in a different way right that is probably the perfect syndicate that can invest right where each uh, investor member is able to add value in a different capacity uh to the startup right so uh so sure that's broadly what i wanted to share and something that we always say at hitstart is your time to start up is now right it is never yesterday nor tomorrow i think it is definitely now uh, i'm i'm really grateful to you know susha paresh and prajak for uh, taking the time out and doing this today and uh, you know i look forward to the next session on on 12 which is next saturday uh, you know again we have two very big names like prajak and paresh uh you know who are joining us to joining you uh, you know all of you at the investor circle and uh, running you through their experience of investing right so we are, we again have a couple of uh, very prolific investors next next week and uh, i think a lot more questions specific into investing valuation uh, port i mean post uh, investment support to the startups etc right so these are things that we'll cover a bit more in depth next week so a couple of uh, uh, you know questions uh, again uh, getting in maybe uh, you know i would want to gotham if possible we can answer this no i think you have already covered but just because they are asking uh, so how, please ask, explain how can be a part of head start uh, startup network uh, you know or become a volunteer absolutely so from the investor circle part let me again you know, just clarify uh in that circle you will receive a mail in the next uh, you know you will receive a mail in the next 20 minutes to apna you can go ahead and respond to it with any questions or you know fill the form and join us to be a member right so that's on the investor circle part on the uh, head start as a volunteer part you know we will probably ensure that we add uh, uh, you know we add the link on the mail itself so that you know if you wish to volunteer with us you can volunteer right so almost all of us at head start you know our volunteers which is our duty to give back to the community right so this is kushar is an entrepreneur i lead the global startup initiative at uh, infosys dcm so uh, a bunch of us 150 of us as of, uh, you know as of now close to about 400 to 450 uh, alumni so i think uh, you can always volunteer with us fill the form to join us 
you wish to join be a part of the investor circle you know respond to the mail that you will receive we are within the next half hour yeah any specific questions uh, so what i have done is uh, you know, for you all uh, i have uh, I think there's some background. So, so Tushar, I I see that you created a WhatsApp group as well. I think that's a beautiful idea. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure all, all of us who've been there on today's call, you know, including uh, Faresh and Tajak, we would love to stay in touch, you know, uh, and see how can we stay updated with what's happening at Hisar, what's happening with the investor circle as an initiative. Uh, so, you know, I'm really excited to the WhatsApp group. Yeah. So, I would request all of uh, you all to be, uh, you know, engage with us on the group. There's a lot of uh, other information and a lot of updates which you can keep on receiving. We all can keep in touch because I can still see a lot of uh, questions which are coming in. And uh, you know, uh, please expect a mail from us uh, in the next couple of minutes, which will which will get you link to the registration form. Uh, you can uh, fill up the form. One of us uh, will will get in touch with you and uh, explore opportunities of working together. Uh, apart from that, uh, there's the next event on valuation. A lot of queries where they're related to valuation. So uh, we have Arpit from Bloom Ventures with us. He's uh, a very uh, renowned uh, um, person in this uh, space. So we wanted him to speak to you all about uh, uh, valuation and startup investing. So the event is on 12th. I would also request you to give a, a feedback for the session, which is very, very, very important for Head Start. So I would request the uh, organizing team to post it. So this feedback helps us, uh, you know, improve it further for the next session. So please uh, give appropriate rating, um, so that we can take a note of it and uh, further improvise things. Uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, I have uh, also uh, pinged in the mail ID investments at headstart.in, and uh, you can reach out to us in case you want to know more and explore opportunities with us. Uh, feel free, you all. Are you all are welcome to join the WhatsApp group and uh, you know explore more opportunities of working together. Uh, thank you so much. I hope that uh, uh, it, it was a uh, time worth investing for you all and we all look forward to interacting with you. Uh, if there are any specific question, please ping or maybe join the WhatsApp group. So we'll wait for a couple of seconds uh, for people to uh, put in the polls. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge uh, all of our partners for this event, Neos, Angels, Acculegal, Grandmark, uh, as well as all the incubator partners uh, who, who helped us in taking this event uh, uh, live with you all. And thank you so much for uh, the patient listening and being with us for the session. We look forward to interacting with you in the next session on 12th of December, 2 p.m. Thank you so much, everyone. I think uh, now we can end the session and thank you so much. Bye-bye.